Now, Tiny 11 has been on my radar for quite some time. Now, it's a stripped down version of Windows 11. It actually removes all the restrictions so you can install it on incompatible devices. So let's check it out. Now, the advantages of having Tiny 11 is that you can install it on devices like the Zima board or even this little Kiwi 310, which is an Intel based computer, or even the Chromebooks that I've modified so you can actually install Windows. It's perfect for that because it uses extremely low resources, about 12 gigs once you install and a minimum of two gigs of RAM. So you could actually just run it on a very low resource computer. The downside to that is that it does remove a lot of the software that we normally would be used to having, which is like, like .NET 3.5 or uh, VC Run or a bunch of other stuff that makes software compatible to run in Windows. Now in a dev environment, this is actually perfect for us because we only really need to run maybe one or two software on these devices, but we don't need all the extra software that comes with Windows that makes it extremely bloated, like Candy Crush. We don't need Candy Crush inside one of these devices. But honestly, if you need a Windows for everyday use, I wouldn't really recommend Tiny 11. Just install the standard Windows. But if you need something very, very small for like a VM or devices like this, or even a Raspberry Pi 4, because he said it is compatible, using something like a stripped down version of Windows 11 would be great. The website that we're checking out right now is from NT Dev Labs. It does have a script that will actually automate the entire process of building this ISO. Now, I highly recommend checking out and using this instead of finding an ISO on the web. There's been reports that people are sneaking malware into the pre-built ISOs. So just be very careful. I would recommend just building it yourself, which doesn't take too long. It's like 10, 15 minutes at most just running his little script. Now he does have all the instructions here that you can follow. First, it's compatible with two types of windows, which is the 22621 or the dev build, which is the, or in, the insider build, which is the 25300. You could either get it from UUP or directly from Microsoft's website. Now to go into Microsoft's website, it's really easy to download this ISO. Just follow these prompts and then you get a link for 24 hours and you can do download the ISO. Now that one is for the 22621. Now if you want the, insider build which is the 25300 then yes you will have to go to uup dump and in here you can find the compatible versions that you need and you can also get the arm version here as well for the raspberry pi 4. something i do want to test that i have not tested yet but apparently it is compatible so maybe in the future i'll play around with it as soon as you have the iso uh you just run the uh tiny 11 creator that bat if you're using the insider build, use the compatible version along with that build. Otherwise, you could just use the standard Tiny 11 creator. That's what I did. Again, it takes about 10 to 11 minutes to create the ISO. And I did have a problem running this ISO on its own. I don't know what it was, but I had a problem that the boot disk wasn't creating. So I actually ended up using Ventoy and Ventoy was able to boot into this ISO. I do have a video on how to build Ventoy. So I'll leave it right over here, but otherwise it does work. now according to the script, this is what's been removed. Uh, Clip Champ, News, Weather, Xbox, um, a bunch of other stuff like Candy Crush, Facebook, um, a lots of stuff has been removed. Um, TTS, Speech Support, uh, OCR, like a lot of things that if you're going to be using some sort of board like the Zima board, or if you're planning to build like signage, you know, this is really good for that. But yes, a bunch of stuff has been removed, even Microsoft Edge. So keep in mind, if you need a browser, uh, just do something what we used to call the sneaker network, which is, you know, save it onto a USB disk and then carry it over to the next computer and then load in Firefox. Yeah, you can do that. So that's pretty much it. If you do run into issues, check out his issue boards. He might have repaired some of the stuff. But again, I haven't had an issue running this ISO uh, off Ventoy. And I was able to install it into the Zima board itself. So we're gonna be checking it out right now. All right, so here we are. Um, we are booted into Windows 11. And you can see it's basically, there's nothing going on. Now, if I go into the start menu, there is nothing here other than certain things that got installed, which is my drivers for audio, graphics, and a bunch of other stuff for this computer. Now, when you first install this, it is 12 gigs of RAM. I might have image, but if I don't, it's 12 gigs of RAM when you first install it. But after the first update, which is installing all the drivers and the language packs and everything that you need, it does come down to 14 gigs of used space so keep that in mind that it is 12 gigs but it does go up to uh 14. so if you got uh ssd that's only 16 gigs you still might not be able to fit this in uh just keep that in mind 
it does go up to like 14 gigs just like this without any browser installed i have nothing installed in here this is just a fresh boot fresh install to go into task manager a little bit because this is where most of the praise happens you could see that it is only using two gigs of ram and this does settle so eventually after the computer has been booted for quite some time it goes down to 1.7 gigs which i have noticed but you could see it's still using 100 percent cpu it's first boot um, it does have a little bit of latency before it starts going down on the memory because I think it's store stuff. Now, a few things that I did notice is that they did remove indexing on the storage. So when you try to use something like terminal, um, which is, I believe, installed on here, and I try to search for a folder, honestly, I don't know if it's because it's using 100% CPU, but it does take a, it's a little laggy when it's trying to run programs. But if I was to do CD desktop and I hit tab, I just hit tab. You see how it took like about five, not even five, like two seconds for it to load. That usually tells me that um, folder indexing is not apparent. So it does take a few seconds for it to search for what you're trying to look for. If folder indexing was available, it would have just popped up right away. Uh, same thing if I was to do Microsoft, like I hit tab right now, it should pop up with edge. It's, and I can't even type anything right now. There you go. It, it does pop up with Edge, but it does take like a few seconds for that to come up, which is again, folder indexing or file indexing. It's missing from here. Not super apparent if you're not planning to use this as a full desktop, because that's a thing that we rely on a lot of, but you don't really realize it, you know, when you're searching for certain things or if you're trying to do certain things on your computer and it takes a few seconds just to load that folder. That's the reason why. Again, it could be because the CPU usage is very high on this and just running a little PowerShell brought it up to 2.2 gigs of RAM. There are a little bit of downsides to running such a small operating system because you lose all these features. It did install my Intel graphics and everything and the CPU that I am running it on is on an N3450, which is the Zima board, uh, similar to what this guy is as well, which is the Kiwi 350. I think this is the same CPU, the N3450 on here. So running such a small operating system on these devices that has like pinouts and stuff would be great. Just, I wouldn't recommend this as a desktop usage. I mean, you do have to like re-enable all the stuff that makes the storage uh, be used up a lot and also more memory usage. So in a standard st uh, standpoint, if you're gonna use this as a normal PC, you're better off just installing the full version of Windows 11. But little projects like this, I would just recommend Tiny 11. Uh, NT Dev also has Tiny 10. It's a Windows 10 version, but shrunk down version just like this one. I know I mentioned this before, but you could also notice that the Zeman board doesn't have TPM. It doesn't have the correct RAM. It doesn't have the correct uh, CPU. So everything is incompatible to actually install Windows 11, but it does work. And this ISO removes all those restrictions so you wouldn't have that problem. If you are having problems with installing on certain laptops or stuff like that, you can start off with Tiny11 and then just add all the software along the way. But as you notice, just me sitting here for like, however long explaining this video, it's already used up more storage. It's right now 12.8 free instead of 14. So it already used up another extra gig uh, as we were just doing this video. Now it's used up to 16 gigs instead of 14. So it is downloading, it is doing something and it is increasing all the CPU usage. And I have almost all my things off right now, but it's 2.4 gigs of RAM instead of two gigs of RAM. That is it for this uh, Tiny 11. I do recommend it if you are gonna use it for projects for Zima board, stuff like this, or even your modified Chromebooks. But as of a standard desktop, I would not recommend it at all because it seems like it's, so, it's missing so many things that a standard desktop would need that I would just prefer installing regular Windows 11. Now I do plan to build this version for the Raspberry Pi. So I will test this on Raspberry Pi to see if it runs a little bit better and how many things would be missing for me to actually make Raspberry Pi more functional. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. Everything we talked about, I will link down in the description below as well if you wanna create your own image. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.